Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, September 10th, 2018. I want to do a quick market update. Um, market updates have become more frequent recently because we're seeing more developments. When the market's just grinding up or down, and you don't really have any type of, uh, um, you know, significant technical level support, resistance, chart patterns, things like that, uh, the market updates are a little less frequent. So uh, here we go. Let's just talk about what's happened uh, since Friday. Not a whole lot today, but I do want to reiterate, um, you know, I still think there's some more downside. I still think uh, the Qs particularly, I'm referring to QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, in particular are in a precarious uh, technical posture right now. SPY looking a little better. And as I'm starting this video, all the sectors in the S&P 500, all 11 sectors are up. Actually, um, I think uh, XLV just went negative shortly, but uh, this, the indexes are up. So let's just look at this video now while the market's trading up, look at some things. So this is the 60 minute chart NQ. Again, I've covered it ad nauseum recently. Um, this is the, uh, the rising wedge pattern we had here. There's a break and I put a measuring tool, a line here shows so far, if I hover on that line, that's from where we broke down from the pattern. It shows a drop of about 3.75% to the low. So, you know, not bad. Again, if you're, you know, even though the primary trend has been bullish, you can gain these pullbacks. And I, again, I go over this many, many times, these charts hit these divergent highs and lows. That's good. You know, if you're trading NQ, that's about, uh, I think, 5,500 per contract right there uh, on a 3.75% drop. But I do think there's more to come. Now, the levels to watch, you can see I've, I've adjusted some lines. These are little micro levels, really. Um, you have this reaction high from last week week that's Friday right there that comes in about 7495 then above that 7516 you see this little consolidation pattern here let me let me uh, box that in for you uh, there's that um, consolidation flagging type action right there so the bottom of that comes in about 7516 and then 75 now uh, 7546 now however let's let's get to the charts of QQQ and I'll show you let's let's move away from this real quick and I'll hit on ES again for you futures traders there's ES ES has been stronger yet a breakdown and a back test of the wedge um, then you moved um, well that's actually from the breakdown point yeah it's about where my target my initial target was 2865 so again the initial target on ES has been hit that's where we bounced on Friday off that initial downside target minimum i should say um once again spy or es looks a little better i have no desire right now to trade that i think the the trade right now in my opinion is on nq so let's look at those charts and we'll wrap this up this won't be a long video uh let's look at this one this is very clean and clear here's a daily chart uh, it's that same uptrend line that I've been highlighting now for a while. It comes off the early uh, early April lows right there. Very well defined. Lots of reactions along the bottom of this trend line. And you see as we zoom in here, we broke down on Friday. Clear breakdown. And we're back testing again today. So we're still below it. So the markets are up. Um, but I do think, and I will say it, I think this is still uh, an objective level uh, to short. Uh, about as objective as it gets. You don't want to you know, short if they drop, you know, four or five percent. I know that's the natural inclination for a lot of traders, but uh, this is where I like to short. Short on either breaks of support or bounce back to support. Now, it may or may not pan out, but uh, you can always cover if we regain that trend line with conviction. Um, but you can see right now everything, all the check boxes that I like to see, negative divergence at that high, that most recent high. And more importantly, again, I would say this divergence is not a buy or sell signal. Um, it is an indication that the trend reversal is likely and you get a buy or sell signal, in this case, a sell signal on the break of trend line support. So there's QQQ. Now, I want to say this. It's not an all in at this point in time. Um, before I move away from QQQ, uh, I'm going to get to a couple of the market leading stocks here, Amazon and Apple. Um, but I do want to look at the uh, 60 minute charts. And one, uh, let's go to this two hour chart right here. OK, here is the uh, 120 minute chart of QQQ. There's that same trend line we were looking at off the April lows. You can see, again, very well defined even on this time frame. And that's it. So breakdown and a back test. So as I say, uh, you know, there's no guarantees absolutely in trading, whether you're going long or short. But all I can say is this is an objective area to short with a stop somewhat above, particularly on a closing basis at this point. Uh, they may try to ramp up, ramp the markets back above that trend line. But uh, so your downside's minimal. I mean, you could literally have a one, two, you know, maybe 3% stop. And that should all be in line with what your target is. I think there's uh, certainly the potential to move down here another 6% or so 
to that uh, 170.86 level. And here's some of the shallower targets. We look at the 60 minute chart that's that same trend line coming in and you can see us there we're also below this uh, 182 64 resistance you can see right here if we look at the 60 minute chart uh divergent high uh right there a little correction but i'm looking at these reactions reaction 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 and then a gap up above there so this was a breakout um uh, bullish on face value but that breakout failed so far it came back back tested right here but we fell back below that level so we're below two fairly significant technical levels that uptrend line again off the early April lows and that 182.64 level which was a battleground recently uh, right here between bulls and bears uh, bulls took it out but uh, as I often say fewer things in trading are more bearish than a failed long side breakout so that's it uh, I wish I could make a, a stronger case to short on spy and I did want to get to one other uh, couple stocks here let's look at Apple I mentioned this uh, this was a, a trade setup an official trade idea in the trading room on right side of the chart on a breakdown of this wedge we did break down and that's playing out you can see we had that initial thrust down this is by the way a 60 minute chart if i don't make mention it's right up here in the uh, upper left hand corner hourly chart so you had that initial thrust down that impulsive action confirmed the breakdown um and then you had a little period of consolidation and another thrust down today to come in just shy of my first target there so far uh, there could certainly be more and just like QQQ I don't see a whole lot in the charts uh, that indicate that this is over sure we're oversold and oversold uh, you know especially during an uptrend or bull markets are usually time to go long but this oversold reading didn't come after a breakdown so that was a good buy signal the trend was up this oversold reading comes on the heels of a breakdown and so what I think will happen you maybe get a little kickback rally and then another leg down and obviously Apple has a big impact being the largest holding in QQQ and SPY and the other one that I have highlighted recently uh, is Amazon let's look at the daily chart uh, Amazon I actually for members of the site I posted on the front page today uh, if you are a member and watching this and haven't checked that I put up a chart on Amazon um, actually a, and a link to that ch a chart where you can click on it save it if you have a stockcharts.com account uh, that's a different chat a charting platform that I'm using here um, what I did on that one is I gave two alternative trend lines I have this uh, both trend lines uh, gener are generated off this uh, late October 2017 low. So it's almost a year long trend line now. Very well defined. And the one that I put on, I actually gave two on that uh, chart you can see on the front page. This is what I call the BOD or benefit of the doubt trend line. When I zoom in here, let me give you a different board without all the lines in there. Okay, here it is. So I'll replicate this trend line, come right in. See, there's three candles right here, comes in here. So what I did is I moved this out. Now I, I call that, I nicknamed this the benefit of the doubt trend line because when I can draw two trend lines, and I think each are very valid, this is the trend line that I've been highlighting recently. It captures a lot more reactions, more candlestick bodies, and or wicks uh, you can see down there there's a wick the shadow the, the skinny part so that's trend line number one and I, I suspect that when this trend line breaks and we have a daily close and or an impulsive intraday break that will probably do the trick but when I can have draw two trend lines in very close proximity I give the benefit of the doubt to the latter of the two to break now what I mean by that if it's a you know a bullish pattern I'm looking at and I'm drawing a downtrend line I have two downtrend lines very close proximity or even for example maybe a downtrend line on a stock but then I have a horizontal resistance level right there just above it so the stock breaks out but then I see a, a significant horizontal resistance level I'll hold off to the last of the two break because all more eyes might be watching this level and you hit that in reverse so uh, same story when you have uh, dual trend lines as well. So right now, this is the benefit of the doubt trend line. I think uh, the, it would give a high probability sell signal if and when this trend line breaks. Uh, and you either want to see a very impulsive intraday break. You'll know it when you see it. A uh, big red candle, a lot of quick selling, uh, powerful selling on increased volume in Amazon. Or a daily close and not a close right on it. You want to see a close comfortably below it. And uh, because of the weighting that Amazon has, it's the world's second largest company right behind Apple. Uh, so either number one or top two in S&P 500 and, and NASDAQ 100 as far as weightings go. And again, uh, this other board I showed you here, you have the divergent high. That tells me that sooner or later, uh, one of these pullbacks of this trend line will break. When you have a trend line, 
uh, you can certainly buy back. That's a, that's a strategy, a uh, trend following strategy. When you get a, find a trend, have a well-defined trend line, buy pullbacks to support on that trend line. Uh, but at some point when you start to see prices diverge, momentum is waning, and that's what the negative divergence is all about. At that point, uh, I'm more interested in preparing uh, or getting ready to watch for a break of that trend line uh, for a short entry versus buying back up going long on a pullback to that trend line. So that's it. Anyways, because of the weightings that uh, Apple and Amazon have in the um, in the Nasdaq 100, I think uh, it's worth watching this one. And uh, and I also want to state that this would be a, a pretty powerful sell signal because we're looking at a daily time frame. I showed you the 60-minute chart on Apple. Uh, and that's just a 60-minute chart. And if it plays out, maybe there's more to it. I can't make a, a you know on the on the daily chart Apple. I can't make a screaming case to. Uh, for a swing short, although remember, if Amazon breaks and that ushers in a lot of selling in QQQs, these, these stocks, these leading FANG stocks are so intertwined now because they make up the bulk of the returns, the bulk of the money that's in QQQ. So if people start selling Apple or Amazon, they're selling it. It QQQ has to sell it. QQQ goes down. There's more selling. Selling begets selling, just like buying begets more buying in an uptrend. So uh, that's that. Then let's see what happens. Uh, quick look at SPY. SPY, like I said, looks a little bit better. You have a divergent high. Uh, you had a divergence from this point here. You can see a trend line right here. Uh, wrong tool, but there, there's a trend line from that point there, as well as a trend line I had it on my chart earlier right here. Uh, a divergence line, really, more so than a, than a trend line. Uh, but this is the trend line to watch right here. So Apple is in that uptrend comfortably right now, um, you know, not in the same precarious uh, position that uh, QQQ is. And by the way, QQQ, uh, as you guys know, is, is almost a mirror of XLK, which is a technology ETF. I should have covered that. And so you can see, and I mentioned this too, is the other, um, you know, along with Amazon, the nail in the coffin will be a break of this XLK trend line as well. XLK, um, or I should say QQQ, as I often say jokingly, is really XLK with an Amazon kicker because the overlap is so strong between the top components XLK, which is all tech. I'll just read them off in order right now. My Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Facebook. Those are the same top five in, in the QQQ, except you have Amazon in there because that's uh, considered um, consumer discretionary. So bottom line, this replicate this trend line it also not by coincidence comes off the early april lows and you can see that's the difference so uh whereas qqq is broken down it's not a hard sell signal yet because you don't have the tech sector breaking down uh it could soon we we found support on friday actually on thursday as well there's friday's candle today we're up a little bit watch for break of that level set a price alert when you see that go and then when you see amazon go i think that'll be the nail in the coffin or at least a very high probability uh, sell signal for a swing short on the queues and the market for that matter. QQQ is not going to go down 5 plus percent without SPY following it down. SPY may fall less, but it will almost certainly go down. All right, let's wrap it up here. Those are the, uh, those are the things I'm watching right now. We'll keep an eye on it, and uh, I'll update you if I see any significant technical developments. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.